Halloween, the time of year where many figures of fright and nightmare run abound, such as witches, ghosts and ghouls are all prevalent, and many tales are spun in the dark concerning frightening creatures like pumpkin men and whatnots and all sorts of scary things. So hey, I thought, why not get into the spirit of the spooky season myself? And so I went and dug out a classic animated short that's perfect for such a season. It portrays a character that one not oft associates with Halloween. I am the dead artisan, and today I'll be talking about the creepy animated short, The Sandman. The Sandman isn't the first fantasy-like creature that you'd associate with a boogeyman. Why, in fact, even with the most recent portrayal on the big screen with the animated feature, Rise of the Guardians, he's quite a cute, charming, lovable little sweet sugar plum. Oh, he's so adorable. In which you usually go by this depiction of the Sandman, it usually is the first thing you would envision for the character. So as the title for this short, The Sandman, just by going by namesake alone, one can understand the thought process of this primary school teacher in Aberdeenshire, whom in so doing scarred his pupils upon viewing this film for a project they were working on, thus forcing the school to apologise to the parents of the students in the class, claiming their kids were having nightmares the night after watching The Sandman. One mother is even quoted as saying her husband had to sleep in the child's bed that night to comfort her. And this parent saying, Oh, son has never really been scared much of anything, really, but he's been genuinely upset all day and scared to go to sleep. He is in no way a crybaby. I would be the first one to say, get over it, son. It's just a stupid movie. But this is not what I send him to school for. What brilliant accounts of how mentally scarring this short is. Well, upon first glance, you can forgive the teacher. After all, the aesthetics of the short is very Tim Burton-like in style as it brims with that Nightmare Before Christmas flair. That, let's face it, we all love. I mean, kids enjoy Nightmare Before Christmas. It's a great heartfelt holiday crossover theme special, and kids enjoy being spooked a little. And as great visually as Nightmare Before Christmas is, it doesn't cross that threshold of being too scary for kids to watch. Yes, it has its scary moments, but they're softened by the film's end, with Father Christmas rectifying the situation. In The Sandman, there's none of that and it has a harsh, impactful, frightening ending. So you might forgive this teacher whom did little research to understand what this animated short was about, and just ended up whacking it into the DVD player, not really realising that this film isn't intended for young audiences. So where did the basis of this frightening imagining of the Sandman come from? Well, it goes all the way back to 1816, where German Gothic horror and romantic writer named E.T. Hoffman wrote the story of the Sandman, the Sandman. It was indeed the first story published in one of his books in 1817, called Night Pieces. It is this wicked incarnation of the Sandman that would become the inspiration for stop motion animator Paul Berry to adapt for a short film that was commissioned for Channel 4 in 1991. Paul Berry was a fantastically gifted animator of the stop motion variety. He started off working at my favorite but alas diminished animation studio Cosgrove Hall, where he worked for the Wind in the Willows animated series, only the best and only brilliant adaptation of the book, bloody love that show me. And with the Cosgrove Hall phenomenal stop motion department studio at his disposal, created a great piece of German expressionism, as well as a truly brilliant work of art that fits like a glove in terms of style and direction for Hoffman's European legend. And you most probably have come across Paul Berry's other works, which include becoming one of the animators for Nightmare Before Christmas, surprise surprise, and the supervising animator for Monkey Bone. But sadly, Paul passed away in 2001. He's a great talent that is sorely missed in the world of animation. But hey, let's celebrate his remarkable gift for the creative arts with just how wonderful the Sandman is. The story is a short and simple one, consisting of an eight minute tale. It is not a story of caution, but more so one just to frighten you, <laughs> just for the sake of it. The titular Sandman of this piece is a weird and creepy yet otherworldly bird-like hybrid monster of both man and beast. He hails from the moon in this tale, 
where his realm is cold and dark, full of sharp iron. Then he embarks to a sleepy quintessential European town where a young boy is playing with his drum. The clock chimes for bed and wow what a friendly looking cuckoo that is. And so his mother sends him off to bed. Now it's interesting to note that the set pieces are all probably designed from the child's perspective. We're seeing this imagined world from his viewpoint, where once his natural habitat becomes twisted and elongated to the extremes that create shadows of fright and longer than what they should be corridors and a staircase that seemingly stretches out much further than it actually does. I would theorise that the mother of this piece is unaffected by the child's viewpoint, as she being a grown woman would not have the same imaginative horrors that the young boy has and therefore does not see the world the same as he does and is unfazed by the set as it just looks like the same old world in her eyes. Whereas the boy of course still envisions his bedroom to be a cold vacuous landscape with naught but the bare essentials thus leaving the young child vulnerable and exposed. Of course you still get this suspenseful and intense build up played for false jump scares you'd expect from a horror film but it is when the Sandman arrives that things get real. He makes his way carefully up the stairs, avoiding those frustratingly squeaky steps and gets into the boy's room in much a frightful fashion. To watch the Sandman come alive is an absolute true delight. He's like a ballet performer. He dances and prances around the set like a dark magic ritual. His puppet was so beautifully crafted too. You can really feel the work of muscle texture gone into his facial makeup in regards to the way he was sculpted. And of course, not forgetting to mention, he has a great feathery texture to his body. And what a beautiful color scheme he has as well. A magical moonlight blue that built up his creepy persona. Not to mention that delightfully fiendish crescent moon shaped face that helps encapsulate his home from where he hails from. He truly is an otherworldly, dark and gorgeous puppet to behold. He really comes into his own as he dances his way around the set, trying to make the boy wake up, but to little to no effect, until finally he gets an opportunity to strike. As he makes his way back with his spoils of victory for the night, to reveal to us the frightening image of these horrid screaming little creatures and an utterly traumatic depiction of his latest victim. Wandering in the dark like abyss, searching forever for his eyes. <laughs> A remarkably brilliant adaptation of Hoffman's story. What can I say about the visuals of this piece? First of all, let's look at the set pieces themselves. The set pieces that make up this fabricated world of the child are of great design. The set would have to have been constructed very much in a way that will play greatly with the lights as the shadows of the set become the warp imaginings of the child's mind and create that frightening atmosphere. Both the scenery and the lighting work in excellent conjunction, helping build up that level of fear and threat that this wonderful short piece captures so well. And I would be amiss not to mention the brilliant use of music implemented throughout this film. The music itself is another marvellous feat of triumph that this film has going for it. It consists of multiple layers of magical childhood innocence. And then shifts into eerie background noise that helps set the film's frightening tone. Another one of the film's many strongest aspects also comes from the sound design. I particularly enjoyed the sound effect that was used to capture that bird-like beast that is a part of the Sandman's genetic makeup, such as the Chuff Chuff sound effect. There's a marvellous sense of Hitchcock and Nosferatu elements in this film. What else can I say about this film, other than it's just a fantastic work of art that showcases what a great talent Paul Berry was, having left a beautiful impact on the world of animation. It's no real surprise as to why this film was nominated for an Oscar. 
the ending is absolutely horrifying and will definitely leave a mark on you, and as evidenced earlier, is not suitable for young viewers, as it will keep them awake with nightmares. It's a perfect marriage of animation and music at its finest, and is very much so akin to fine art of animation, and everything comes together so very well for an adaptation of E.T.A. Hoffman's story. So do yourself a favour this spooky season, and check out Paul Berry's adaptation of E.T.A. Hoffman's The Sandman. You're in for a treat. So until we meet again, if I don't see you in your dreams, I'll see you in your nightmares. Ha 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 ha. Oh yes, and don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you're new to the channel for future videos.